Look, before we even get started, I gotta say this, and I hate to be this guy, but I'm gonna be this guy. I told you so. Wow, 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 wow. When I saw that, I didn't even know what to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Malik Willis' biggest nightmares are coming true. This is why I love YouTube, because it's a time capsule. Everything I say, for better or worse, it's documented. If I have a bad take, what is everybody gonna do? They're gonna pull up the video footage and go, oh, Matt, see, you're stupid, you're an idiot, and blah, 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 so on. But, and I have a big but, on the rare occasions where I have a good take, I get to toot my own horn and pull up my own video footage. Not a couple of months ago, not even in the middle of the season last year, not even against that terrible game against the Kansas City Chiefs, did I upload this video. Over a year ago, before Malik Willis even played a snap in the NFL, I told each and every single one of you that Malik Willis is not an NFL talent and he's not an NFL starting quarterback and he never will be. He's just simply not that guy. I think he's a great person, but he's not a great quarterback. But here's the craziest part about all this, ladies and gentlemen. As low as I was on him, as low as my expectations were for his NFL football career, I didn't think it was going to be this bad this quick. And to be honest, I kind of feel bad for him, but this is how the business works. This is how the game is played. As much as we've seen recently all these quarterbacks inking these quarter million dollar deals, hundred million dollar contracts, those are the rare exceptions. For all the others, it's cutthroat. I think it's more than safe to say that Malik Willis, he's finding that out the hard way. We're going to talk all about that in today's video. Also, we got two other minor topics, very minor topics to speak on. We got another update on Anthony Richardson that the Colts running back put out there. I really found that intriguing. But also, what is going on with Cam Newton? I'm sure many of you have heard about this Cam Newton situation. If you haven't, well... You're in for a treat. We got not one, not two, but three topics. It's going to be a jam-packed video. If you like football content, look, man, it's simple. I'm not going to try to convince you. Consider joining our community. Subscribe to the channel. We're on the road 300K. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get on to it. Okay, just like yourself, I want to get into this Malik Willis situation. So we're only going to talk about the Cam Newton topic and the, oh yeah, Anthony Richardson topic for two minutes total. I know, I know I'm late to the party on this, but I've had a couple people ask me to talk about it and here it is. And I really just want to hear your guys' thoughts on this because I think this is ludicrous. So Cam Newton has came out and stated that he thinks his dreadlocks and fashion have quote unquote hindered his chances of being in the league. Here's the two quotes he said and it's just laughable. People have hinted towards to say, Cam, we want you to go back to that 2015 clean cut Cam. But that was a different me. Right now, where I'm at, it's about embracing who I am. Cam, you scaring people the way you look. And I would say, yo, like, I'm not going to name names, but there's other quarterbacks that's in the league that don't look like me. But they got long hair. They don't scare them, do they? Yeah, uh, that happened. All I got to say about this is I disagree 10,000%. Your hair and the way you dress isn't why you're not in the league, Cam Newton. You're not in the league because you're not good anymore. Plain and simple. Cam Newton in his prime, yeah, he was awesome, but that's over. You're not in the league anymore because you can't throw a football. I don't know how to dumb it down any more than that. This whole false narrative that you're not in the league because of your fashion and hair, come on, man. This reminds me a lot of those type of people that they never have, what's the word I'm looking for? They never have self-awareness. Whenever something bad happens to them, they're always pointing the finger somewhere else when they need to look in the mirror. I just don't understand the excuses. He would be way more likable if he just came out and said, yep, I've fallen off, but I'm still going to work hard. He should just leave it at that. But now he's to the stages of, oh yeah, well the league, they've blackmailed me. They've blacklisted me. Come on, man. Cam Newton, you was way too good of a football player, had way too good of a career to go out this sad. And it honestly is sad. Nobody's blacklisting you, man. Nobody is. Let's get on to our second topic, though, and that is Anthony Richardson. Look, I'm not going to sit up here hype him up, we've done that enough, but I do want to read you off what the college running back Jonathan Taylor had to say about him. According to the reports in a recent interview, Taylor, he stated that Anthony Richardson will develop faster than every other quarterback in the AFC South. By the way, which includes, as you can see here, Trevor Lawrence, CJ Stroud, Malik Willis, and Will Levis. A little sneak peek, we're going to talk about Malik Willis and Will Levis in just a second. It is also being said, as you can see right here, multiple teams, not just one, but multiple teams, reportedly believe Richardson will be the Colts starter heading into week one that's gained a lot of traction we've already talked a lot about that i personally don't think he should start week one you don't want to throw him in there too early in a high pressure situation i would wait until possibly week six through ten somewhere around that time frame but my opinion is irrelevant whatever the colts want to do they want to do and i don't blame them too much for starting them week one if they do do that because 
you picked him fourth overall. Like, let's go. Let's get this thing on the field. Let's get it moving. You know, you don't want to put a Lamborghini in the garage and never drive it. If you spend $250,000, 300K on a car, or whatever the price of a Lambo is now, you got to drive the thing. So I guess the Colts are going with this approach of, hey, we're going to find out right now if this car is worth it. And if it ain't worth it, well, we're going to move on. But getting on track here with this, what do y'all think about Jonathan Taylor already stating, yeah, he's going to develop faster than every other quarterback? I kind of want to agree with it because when you look at it from this standpoint, who has the most room to grow and develop? That's Anthony Richardson, right? So with that being said, when you have the most room to grow, well, it's going to be easier to grow. That's going to be something to keep your eyes on. But now finally moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, we got to talk about good old Malik Willis. Ah, yes, the day has come. Malik Willis' biggest nightmare is coming true. Look, before we even get started, I got to say this, and I hate to be this guy, but I'm going to be this guy. I told you so. Not only did I tell you over a year ago, as you can see right here, but I also tried warning you seven days ago. You can't make this stuff up. I need to buy me a lottery ticket at this point. What did I say seven days ago? You see the video right here. You can go watch it for yourself. Malik Willis's career has ended already. And on that video, let me read you off a couple of comments because I did find them pretty interesting. Duh, one, two, three, four, five, six, man, one said, I wouldn't say his career is over that fast. He still has a chance to compete and improve. I know Malik literally isn't, I think he meant to say, I knew Malik his entire life. And he's a baller who hasn't been playing quarterback that long. Hmm interesting look i get it you may know this guy but that doesn't mean he's a good quarterback you don't want to hear this news but you're gonna to have to accept it it's the cold harsh reality i'm never gonna tell you what you want to hear on this channel i'm gonna tell you what you need to hear and the quicker you accept this the quicker you'll be able to move on and a lot of people like this comment so i assume people agree with them you saying i wouldn't say his career is over that fast you're wrong. I don't know how to break this down. I don't know how many times I gotta say it. I guess I gotta say it over and over and over. His career is done. His career ended before it even started. And that isn't a knock against Malik Willis. That is just the reality of the NFL. Y'all gotta understand something. A lot of these quarterbacks don't get fair shots. Look at Matt Corral for the Panthers. Matt Corral is buried on the depth chart. They drafted him last year. He didn't even get a shot. For Malik Willis, at least, he got a shot last year and he was terrible. The harsh reality is if you're not a top 10 pick in this league, you may not even get a legitimate shot to prove yourself. Like I said, though, Malik Willis, he got a shot. He got multiple shots, and he failed to prove himself. So it's over. I hate reading off long comments. I know you guys don't like them either, but I got to read you off this one. It's really good. Organic Hustling said, by the way, thank you for the comment. You are exactly right, Matt. Unless you are a first-round quarterback, teams will usually give up on you if you fail to show up unless they put a huge investment into you. Literally, like I just said, a huge investment. Top 10 pick, a guy like Anthony Richardson. Continuing along here here right after you. I remember a few years ago, Paxton Lynch was a first rounder, started a few games for Denver, didn't really do too well, and that was the end of the story. I ain't heard of him since. It seems like every year around February, some guy we never heard of is now all of a sudden can't miss first round prospect at quarterback. Every year it happens. You're 100% right. It happens every single year. And this, this is a completely different conversation and video for a different day, but the same thing happened for Zach Wilson. I watched Zach Wilson in college. He was good, but I never saw NFL talent in him. I never once looked at Zach Wilson and thought, oh yeah, that guy's a first round pick. Never. But all of a sudden, pre-draft process and all this bullcrap's going on, next thing we know, when he get drafted? Wasn't it number two overall? And I get it, everybody's gonna say, well, oh, duh, Matt, it's easy to hate on Zach Wilson now because he failed, but I was never high on him in the first place. I don't even know where the video would be, but I said it years ago that I didn't believe in Zach Wilson. I wish I could find the video, but I've made so many videos on my channel, and you guys know this, I don't know where it would be. Maybe some of you will find it. Like I said, different video for a different day. The point is, this happens every single year. Some overrated quarterback gets overhyped and it never works out. Great comment from Organic Hustle and thank you for that. I'm going to stop myself right there before I go on a complete rampage and tangent about how Zach Wilson was overrated and I always believed that. Let's get back on track here with Millie Willis. Matt, shut the crap up, lock in. Sorry. So, seven days ago, that's when I posted that video. We're on the same page, right? And well, 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 guess what? Late last night, I got tagged in this, by the way. Thank you for tagging me in this. You know who you are. This new update about Malik Willis is that the Titans could release him. It is being stated that Malik Willis could be in danger of not even making the 53-man roster. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know what everybody's saying. Well, what the crap? What happened? What's going on? Well, the reason for that is because it's being speculated that the Titans, they're only going to keep two quarterbacks. Those two quarterbacks, obviously, Ryan Tannehill and Will Levis. 
quote unquote, here's what it states. Malik Willis, a third round pick last year, is the odd man out as long as Ryan Tannehill is on the roster. Will Levis is going to be on the team and the Titans don't typically keep three quarterbacks on the 53. Wow, 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 well, wow. When I saw that, I didn't even know what to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Malik Willis' biggest nightmares are coming true. I hate it for the kid, but this is how the NFL works. I found these two comments pretty funny though. Somebody said under that, they never even gave him a chance. That got a thousand likes. And then somebody replied and said, they see him every week in practice. <laughs> somebody said, Titans have Walmart employees. That's <laughs> why <laughs> they really did though. I don't know if there's a curse in Nashville, Tennessee, but the Titans, just like this tweet says right here, they can't figure it out when it comes to the quarterback position. That's gotta be one of the most frustrating things ever if you're running this organization because if they had a great, or not even a great, just a really good quarterback, they'd be competing for championships. They have completely wasted Derrick Henry's monstrous career. Check out this tweet. Remember how the quote unquote draft analysts were talking about this kid and yep, yep I do. However, if y'all would have been listening to your boy Matt, you would have saw this coming. I'm going to toot my own horn here. On this channel, if you've been watching, you know I've been wrong on many, and I mean many, many, many things. But the one area, the one aspect that I've yet to be wrong on up to this point, and I, that'll probably change in the future, but as of right now, it hasn't changed. That's quarterbacks and head coaches. I can tell you within a couple of games if a quarterback's going to be really, really, really good, if he's average, or if he's not good. And the same thing applies for head coaches. I can tell you within a year if a head coach, he has it or he doesn't. I don't know why I've been so good with predicting how all these quarterbacks are going to play out. Maybe it's because of all the film study I've done. Maybe it's because of the research. Maybe it's a combination of everything. I don't know. But here's what I do know. I've been right, and I'm not going to question it. As I've gotten older, as I've matured in this life, I've learned when you got a good thing going, don't question it. Just shut up and enjoy the ride. That's what I'm trying to do with my predictions. Now, as far as it goes for Malik Willis, what's next? And let me make this clear. When I say I got a good thing going, I'm not talking about I'm praying on Malik Willis' downfall. Y'all get what I'm saying. My predictions, they've been right. Malik Willis, he's a good kid. For those of you that don't know this, he donates a ton of money to charity. And I'm not saying donating money makes you a good person, but he's done a bunch of other things. That's just one of them. I've heard nothing but great things from him. I think his best bet at this current moment in time would be, and I don't know how all this would work out, but I don't think he's an NFL quarterback. I think at best he'd be a backup. So I know he probably wouldn't want to do this just from an ego standpoint, but what about going to the USFL? What about going to the XFL? I mean, I, I know that's a major step down, but why not? And that's only if he wants to play football. Obviously, the smarter business move and financial decision would be to remain in the NFL and be a backup quarterback. What I'm more so of talking about is five years from now. Because obviously, he'll more than likely ride out this deal with the Titans or they'll release him. Somebody will pick him up and then it's going to be that endless cycle of he'll get picked up by 25 different teams and just be a second or third stringer. I think a great example is look at AJ McCarron. He got tired of being a backup in the NFL. He was always moving from team to team, so he just said, you know what, I'm going to a different league. And it's turned out great for AJ McCarron, sure. He's not making as much money as he was when he was in the NFL, but he's happier. He's getting to play the game he loves. And I don't care what anybody says, nobody wants to be a backup their entire career. They want to play. So let me know what y'all think about that. I think his best bet is to continue to bounce around in the NFL, rake up a couple million dollars being a backup, and then possibly look to go elsewhere. That's only if he wants to really play. I don't know if he really wants to play. Maybe he's content with just being a backup. But I got a feeling this dude isn't content with that. But maybe that's just me. Let me know your thoughts down below, but I uh,